Hello everyone, Brett back altitude scale modeling. Look, Airfix B17 is back. Ready to put on the bottom coat. Bottom color. Color of the bottom. So, last time we talked about the engines and the cowlings. They're temporarily mounted on. We're repainting the bottom. You can see I got it all foamed up, ready to go. I'm building Thunderbird, which you can see is green over gray, olive drab over gray. And according to these here fix instructions, the gray part is compass gray slash neutral gray. Now I've grown quite fond of these AK real colors, so I've got neutral gray right here. These dry, I get here, and they're rock solid. You don't peel off when you mask them. I've also got they're AK Real Color Thinners. Let's get this out of the way. Got my pipette. I don't know why I'm shaking the thinners. They don't need to be overly thinned, but I want it thinned because I want some of the blacking, black, blacking, black to show through. The black primer to show through. Shake it up real good. Nice neutral gray color. This is a lacquer, so you should probably do this in your spray booth. I like to pour the paint down a toothpick like this so it doesn't go down the side of the bottle. I'm going to do probably 50-50 mix. Stir. Alright. I like to clean off my edges so my lid doesn't stick as much. This does not smell as lacquery as Tamiya's lacquer paint. But I still would recommend a spray booth and not what I just did, splash the paint everywhere. Check yourself out so you don't get paint on your finger, so you don't get fingerprints on your model or anything else. I got a bag of rags from the hardware store. Bag of rags. I'm using my HPC Plus for this. I don't really know my air pressure. My compressor said it 35, but I adjust it with my Mac valve. Got my glove. Got my mask. Let's go. I'm gonna start out with light dusty coats. Keep picking cat hair off of my foam. I do have windows open as well. I'm just not in the spray booth because I can't record in the spray booth.
see these laying down real nice. So, the dusty coat's on the bottom. Now, bring this picture here. And, this picture here, you see what's got to go up under the tail, right there. And then the line you want along the bottom. Now, because this is the first coat, I don't need to have perfect line. I'll mask this off when I went to go to spray the olive drab. So I'm going to make it close to where I want it. But I'm not going to worry about it being perfect. Because it doesn't need to be. Alright. You can see we got the light dusty coat down. We're gonna go a little heavier. Sorry if I sound a little muffled, but my mask is on. And sorry it's been so long since I've been working on this, but thanks everyone who stuck around. And I always say we're going to get moving farther on it, of course, something always happens. We had snow until... May 28th. Six inches of snow on May 28th. So we've been doing a lot of snow removal. The Bombay's just down here with some white tack. So I'm not sure if I want it open or closed yet. Every once in a while, check your flow. Check your needle. I did turn down the air pressure. One thing I forgot to look at was how far up the engines the gray goes. So it looks like oh, sorry. It curves 
right where the wing meets the engine, it curves down and goes out that way. So you want to make sure you have it gray up enough that far. Because as I said, we'll be taping this off later. Let it dry for at least 24 hours, then we're going to mask it all off and do the olive drab part. Okay, I'm going to do the leading edge here. The front of the engine. Because I'm not sure if the leading edge is supposed to be gray or green. So since I got the gray out. We're going to do the leading edge and the front of the engines. Be careful how you're holding it so you don't get fingerprints when you press paint. Alright. The rest of my paint in there. Looks like I measured pretty close to what I need. Provided it doesn't doesn't dry back too far and show too much of the black. Where was I? Tail, tail wings. Filming while you're painting isn't the easiest thing in the world. Ooh, started raining really hard. So, here's after our dusty coat and our first coat. You see? Got some modeling on it, some black showing through. Some places we might want to. <clears throat> some panels we might want to go in there and just. Got some panels and do a little heavier. And I'm not changing the color, I'm just using a thicker, an extra layer of paint that makes it a little heavier. You could if you wanted to. Well, it's raining hard. Do um, a touch of a darker gray. Don't use black. It'll be too too black. Yeah. You know. Maybe do the door. Now you can see. Can you see? Some of these panel lines here, here, are going to need rescribed. But I want to rescribe them after the paint dries so the black will show through on some of these panel lines. And then just pick out a few spots where you think it'd be more modeled. Again, check your lines. Make sure you're up far enough. Because you don't want to have to whip out your gray paint. 
when you've started the olive drab. with the fabric parts be darker because they would wear at a different rate than the metal parts so you see we got some slightly darker panels A little bit of modeling, the fabric areas are darker. We've got sprayed up far enough where we can mask down along and through here. Down along these engines. Mask right along as so you can see the wing and then it went down this way. We've covered our tail section. But as you can see, the foam got around there so we're going to make sure that this is turned way down, it's not way down. So I can get a fine line. And I want to shoot. Away from it. So the overspray went that way. Check these as well. You can see a little bit there and there. Again, with pressure turned way down. Got those in the hair. the reach. This one, there was no mist area. I got the foam on that one just right. So I'm happy with that. This say key, you know, colors lacquer paint lays down nice. It's pretty smooth. I don't know how well you can hear that, but it's pretty smooth. Smooth here. So I'm going to let it dry for 24 hours before I try to mask it, though. Sit that down. See, I got the leading edge of the wings. And if it is supposed to be olive on the leading edge. Actually, according to this, it's got the icing boots all on the leading edge, so it's going to be black anyway. So it doesn't, didn't matter, but better to be safe than sorry. Put that over there. Now, I've always been one to pour my leftover mixed paint back in since I used the manufacturer's color and thinner. I'm not worried about it, it's never been a problem. Put this out of the way, clean the airbrush, and turn it up. Alright, I'm going to use the AK Real Color Thinners for cleaning as well. It's not going to take a lot. Backflow, varying opinions on backflow, but 
Kenneth Badger says it's won't hurt badger, so won't hurt badger it shouldn't hurt any airbrush. Clean up the cup. Spray it into my air pot. So you hear it flow through all the way. And I'm gonna put a little more in. Pull the needle back without air so the needle's not there. Clean out the tip. Clean, ready to go for the next use. Take care of that. Put that out of the way. Put your lid on tight. Where I am, there's no humidity, so stuff evaporates like water. Yeah. Put that out of the way. That out of the way. Put this aside for use at the next time. Pour a little isopropyl alcohol, 99%. I can get that here. Because I manage a hardware store. Clean. Old Q-tips get thrown away. Now, some of you may ask, this is a Hobby Zone air, air spray booth without a vent. Holds an airbrush on the side, sides in the back come off. I'm using this, which is paint masking paper that you can pick up at any local hardware store. That's what this is. It worked. I used to put paper towels down, but it soaked through the paper towels. This it won't soak through and it's will last a long time. Ooh, something came off my plane. Just a piece of photo etch. That looks like it came from Either the Bombay or the landing gear bay. So I'll set that with the rest of my bits. And then I will figure that out once I get things going again. So, where do we go from here? Well, let's look at some of the little extras I got. Sorry, my cat just came up here. Because she saw me taking hair off of things and she had to deposit more hair. The emergency set. I haven't done anything with it yet. These decals may or may not work. If they don't work, I'll just spray white and red. Don't need my glove anymore. I don't need my booth anymore. Let me get this out of the way. Look, parts are coming right out of the box. Let's see. Toss everything I normally keep in here. Yeah, let me move this out of the way. To a modeling area. Get all my stuff out of the way. Alright. See, pieces just keep coming out everywhere.
keep your bags safe and out of the way. So this is one of the trucks. We have directions. I remember from the last time when I looked at this, this is from like 1912. Oh, sorry, 1988. 31 years ago. So, like I did with some of my other vehicles, which are in the other fix kit, the towing truck, the front of the fuel truck, the tank of the fuel truck. I'm going to get them all put together then get them primed. So I need A. So actually this says well, we can read that but all those say A whatever it is. So I need A3 to start with. Any little parts just coming off everywhere. Look at all these flash covered people I'm going to use. Well, not all of them. A4, is that A4? That's A4. I need that part. Let's zoom a little. So, this stuff's going to require some cleanup. The rain just stopped. A4. And there's even someone on a stretcher. Probably won't be using him because this is going to be a scene of refueling and getting ready to take off. Um, A3. That's A1. That's A39. A3. Doesn't look like A3. That doesn't look like A3. Just 39. Now I'm confused. There's sprue map in here. No. Okay, let's try this. That's his A1. 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 Okay. That's his A3 which was this part, but that's obviously not A3. I would have to say this is A3. This is A3. Look at those ejector pin marks. Those aren't going to be fun. Oops, sorry. Distracted by phone message. I was just painting, so I had my watch off, so I'm putting it back on. So I don't get distracted anymore. Anyway, massive ejector pin marks, massive flash. There's a knife around here somewhere. Clean up the flash. See, flash.
Here's a good sanding stick. Many good brands available. This good brand happens to be sold at high altitude hobbies. So this Like that. No. So it must be this one. Like that. This isn't being as much fun as I thought it would be. So you can see by the V here. That's got to be that V there. So it's got to go like that. Line up with those two things and that right there. Like that. Like that. Nope. Like that. Motor sometimes air fix gets frustrate people. Let's put some glue down. Some glue around. Hey. Is this a family show? Am I allowed to swear? It's not even the right frame. So apparently they have two A3s on here. Okay. Now, looking at this picture, that looks right, because you have the little part there, the little part there, then the big part there, and that's got a gap, and it's straight, and it's level. Okay. Uh, A2. A2. Check for cleanliness, check for flash, which there's going to be tons of. Put the lime in the coconut. Okay. Where did I put my sander? Sorry, I think the male's here and the dog likes barking. Of 
Or the male's not here and the dog just likes barking because there's usually some sort of wild animal. A deer. We don't really see bears during the day. It's usually closer to sunset or sunrise. Occasional elk. Never seen any moose up here. Big old flash right there on the bottom. Lots of squirrels, chipmunks, rabbits, foxes. Oh, sorry about that. Just hit my head on it. A couple ejector pin marks here that you want to look at if you think you're going to see the bottom. This. Actually, that lines up pretty good. Better than the first part did. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. It goes there. It goes there. Those are in those grooves. It's in that groove. Okay. I'm using regular Tammy Extra Thin because why not? Hmm. No, that's right. I thought I maybe had the fuel tanks on upside down, but then I realized you want to see them like that. And then a little bit there, a little bit there. So what I'm going to do... Made my camera crooked. All right. Perfect. Oops. A little there, a little there. Normally I get my, yeah pegs out, my clothes pins, my clamps, but they're in the drawer I can't get to because I got the camera mount hooked up to it. That has poor planning on my part. So we're doing that. The glue's being held on. pipe. Getting all flashy. So why aren't I painting these individually before I put them on? Because I think I'll be able to detail them up nice enough when they put on. Uh, flash all over this. So I'm just going to do it then. Because again, it's going to be underneath. It's going to be mounted to the diorama, so no one's going to be able to pick it up. So only I am going to have to know what the bottom looks like. So, we got one exhaust pipe and four leaf springs. Looks like exhaust pipe mounts in that hole. Yep. 
and uh, out the side. There's no real mounting point for the back of it. Leaf springs are five, six, seven, and eight. That's a five, six, seven, and eight, right? Yep. Seven. This is a five. Seven there, five there. Those are not A's. Those are not A's. Those are not A's. Spring in the box, which matches that spring. And there's a spring in the box, which matches that spring. That's why we kept everything in the box. So five and six are for the front. Let me go like this. spot there and you want them up against these parts right here these nubs you want them lined up straight so then the axle goes on there they're all lined up Means we have to do what I just did and reverse them. Okay. And the back ones sit on these pegs right here, here, here. Again, make sure these nubs for the axles are lined up. The ridges are different, so make sure you get the ridges the right way. You're straight. You're not leaning over. There you go. There's the frame of the first one done. Whew. This video is 45 minutes long already. So I think we're going to stop there for now. I won't build any more till the next video, which gives me incentive to make another video pretty quick. So, thanks for watching. Sorry for the delay. Thanks for sticking around. Hopefully this time when I say we're going to progress, I mean it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.